Dietmar Harmon has actually come out has actually come out and said something very interesting. Um, former Liverpool, um, this from February 25th, 2016, originally. Former Liverpool star Dietmar Harmon has thrown his support behind grassroots football, claiming that the breeding ground for future footballers is more important than Premier League academies. Harmon, who played for Liverpool from 99 to 2006, has called for the UK's most talented young footballers to be allowed more time to develop at grassroots level before being swept up by professional clubs. At some stage, the kids at grassroots level get to academies, and I think that's where the big problem is i'm not sure academies prepare kids the right way um i think that grassroots football is more important than any academy because you need to develop your skill and ability make mistakes yourself and find solutions to change things at times they don't get that in academies which is why i think grassroots football is the most important time in a kid's life this is where you follow you in your instincts where you try things where you find solutions um harman was speaking to the business of sport podcast in his role as mcdonald's football um, ambassador promoting the 2016 community awards which are looking for nominations from grassroots football community across the country. Um, the former German international who played junior football um, for the Wacker München before joining Bayern Munich as a 16-year-old is concerned that British youngsters today are taken on um, by professional clubs too young, often with harmful um, consequences for the many players who don't make the cut. Um, at times there are kids who are taken into academies at 10 years old said Harmon they get released when they are um, 12 or 13 and their dream is wrecked when they may have been better off staying where they were keep playing grassroots football and enjoying the game until they are 15 and 16 which I did I think there's a lot of work to be done but let's not forget how important grassroots football is all of the guys who play in the Premier League today and those who walk out of Wembley playing for England they will have started at grassroots level at some stage this is why we've got to support this cause I think grassroots football is more important than any academy in the world this is the most important time for a kid and I think the longer they play grassroots football the better they'll develop Staying with that kind of thing, actually, FAWSL launches sister club program from the Tuesday, 8th of March, 2016. The FA has launched a new sister club program ahead of the new FA Women's Super League FAWSL season. More than £100,000 has been invested by the FA into the program, which aims to drive girls' participation at grassroots level and the tendencies at FAWSL matches. Following successful bids, 11 clubs will take part this season. Arsenal, Birmingham City, Bristol City, Doncaster Rovers, Bells, Everton, Notts County, Oxford United, Reading, Sheffield FC, Sunderland and Yeovil. Um the sister club the sister club program and um, we'll see girls clubs around the country um become affiliated with their local FAWSL club as part of the program sister clubs will gain access to hundreds of match tickets player appearances coaching sessions camps and mascot places there are two levels of affiliation gold and silver um so it is one of them ones where um, FA head of women's leagues and competitions, Kate Brazier, said this program is a really innovative way to continue building on the league's success and enable clubs to further grow their fan bases. We know that the success of the league in terms of both attendance and quality is driven um, by strong grassroots support, it's the FAWSL, um, and this program will allow clubs to build this even further. We look forward to welcoming all the sister clubs and their players at FAWSL games throughout the season. Um, yeah, it's one of them. Was grassroots clubs who are interested in becoming a sister club can find out more information by contacting um, the sister club program officers. So if you go to um, fawsl.com, then um, you can find out the information from there. You know what? Yeah, I think that. <sighs> I I think I think that's I think that's one of them ones where I would I would um Jesse Fizzle welcome to the show by the way and good evening um I would like to ask you I would like to ask you the question before we throw it out to the Skypers number sure one thing. number one how important is grassroots football to football in general and the FAWSL sister club program how important can that be to the future of the WS of the FAWSL well, I'm going to be contrary and take them in reverse order. Mary, all right, Mary, uh, Mary. <laughs> I think that, you know, the sister club program is absolutely huge. What we're talking about is securing the future of the WSL in the long run. We're not just talking about the WSL League 2, but League 1 as well, and, and everything else. You know, that that's really putting in the foundation of supporting the league for many many years to come and and that's what's required here you know if you're going to find future stars 
um, in women's football, especially for the national team as well, and not just the England national team, but national teams around the world, because it is a global game. Um, this is what needs to happen, you know. So I, I think it's a fantastic move, uh, and of course, all of the community incentives there and outreach opportunities just goes to show how forward thinking the whole movement is. You know, I, I know that in the Football League and the Premier League there are similar incentives but let's be honest do they really reach that far down the ladder? Do they make it all the way to the boiler room? And that's a reference to uh, all of my boiler room purple pyjama party people and if you don't know who you are or who they are it's alright you don't need to know I was going to say there's a couple of different ways I thought you were going with boiler room the DJ sets or mankind I thought you were going that way it. No, no, no. Uh, everybody in the boiler room wears purple pajamas. It's the first rule of being a boiler room purple pajama party person. Foley. Purple pajamas. Foley, foley. So anyway, that being said, going over to the importance of, of grassroots in, in football, full stop. Simply put, it's the most important thing. It's the most important thing. Uh, especially in regards to young players and even older players, right? Wasn't there a series, I think it was a couple of years ago, where you had uh, some grassroots, some uh, retired players, some older players, and they're all playing to to get to Wembley and playing a a specialist final? Um, I think so, yeah. It sounds like the old Masters League. I remember the old Masters League they used to show on Sky Sports back in the day. Oh, no, 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 not just that. Not just that. This is like people that had, had uh, pro, semi pro dreams and everything else. Kind of vet, um, vet, like other, oh, every, everybody kind of thrown together, right, to, for an opportunity to play at Wembley. But what I'm saying is without grassroots, right, where do all of these big clubs go and unearth their talent from? Mm. This is the thing. So, you know, one of the hottest names in football in terms of young players right now is Marcus Rashford Mm -hmm. where did he come from glad you mentioned that (laughs) you see what I mean so no no but it it needs to be said like without certain programs in certain areas he doesn't get the opportunity for example to go to Manchester City to then be told yeah he's a little bit on the small side we don't think we're going to sign him. He doesn't meet our minimum requirements for positions that we think he can play in. To then go to Manchester United, to go through the academy, and then be brought up from the academy to be playing in the first team and scoring in, you know, his derby debut. All right, that doesn't happen without grassroots. Same thing about Anthony Martial. Of course, that's over in in France. Wait, right. can, wait, Where did he come from? I was gonna say you can Before say the same thing about you can say the same thing about quite a lot of players in terms of like I mean I mean um, spending my formative years in Latimer Road, Latimer Road, Labour Grove area. I mean a lot of <clears throat> a lot of a lot of players in the area were playing for local clubs like your Elin Shamrocks. That was always that was always a big club name that I heard back in those days. Um, when we when we were growing up, you were always hearing, yeah, the best players from the area getting played, like playing in that side, and um, and it is, uh, yeah, Elian Shamrocks. You always kind of heard heard about, but it is one of them ones where, I mean, I mean, grassroots football is of such importance. I mean, every, I mean, everyone started, whether it be playing for their school team, playing for a local type team. Everyone has to. Everyone has to start somewhere. Whether you play for a school team, local team, whatever, it's a case of everybody has. Everybody has to start. Everybody has to start somewhere. So um, it's 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 one of them ones where it's it's one of them ones where it's just of such it's just of such importance. Um, to keep that area of the game alive, and not only keep it alive, but help it thrive as well which is why i think initiatives initiatives like um the fawsl sister pro sister club program is brilliant i i personally think that i personally think that is a brilliant idea 
and um, stuff like affiliations, putting on specialist coaching sessions, not just saying, oh yeah, you're with us, da, 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 da. we own you. It's uh, it's actually giving giving and taking. It's one of those, it's got to be both, it's got to be both ways. I mean, um, what's it, Katie Brazier saying the program is a really innovative way to continue building on the league's success and enable clubs to grow their fan bases. Of course, that's important for the FAWSL because it's a developing game. But also, it's it's good for grassroots football because it strengthens the links. It strengthens the links and how and and also it's a case it's a case of some the clubs the sister clubs who are affiliated to FAWSL clubs could see right. This is how you run a professional club, and this is how you do it properly. This is how you build up. This is how you go out and get your sponsorship. This is how you put on your coaching sessions. This is how you, this is how you do your camps. This is it's what there's so much that you can glean from it, from that kind of experience and working working with professionals. Not just oh once every month or two. It's regular stuff. If you're affiliated, hopefully it would be regular and it would be for the long term. So it, it's one of them. I mean, grassroots football is so important. I mean, I mean, without grassroots, without grassroots football, <laughs> academies wouldn't have anywhere to get their talent from. Pure and sim- purely and simply, they wouldn't have anywhere to get their talent from. So it's like you can't like don't cut off your conveyor belt or basically starve your conveyor belt of of support not just financial support but support in kind of mind body and spirit it's, it's one of them ones like putting on coaching sessions putting on advice sessions that kind of thing as well so it's one is one of them ones I think, I think the FAWSL sister program is brilliant and I think Dietmar Harmon's right I mean, it's one of them ones grassroots football is more important than the academies because in the academies it's one of them ones you're trying to get into first teams and again, it's this long-term thing. And it's like, academies are the kind of places where you can't really make mistakes because it's so competitive there. So competitive there. And you're already partly seen as some of the elite players anyway if, you, if you've been scouted by an academy. But then you got to bear in mind also, where are them scouts going to get the players for the academy? They're going to grassroots clubs. They're going to amateur league clubs, local clubs. So, it, it's so it's it's one it's one of them ones where it's one of them ones you, you've got you've got to help all areas all areas of the game. And we've discussed this on many on many PT live shows. Letting players develop it's such an important thing. Letting players develop. I mean, Jesse, you brought up Marcus Rashford in particular. And he's his name yeah. and his name's already been mentioned in terms of Euro twenty sixteen. And it's like Bridget, no. No. Well let, let him develop let him develop first. Like, let him have Well a I, I'm I'm gonna suggest something a bit counterintuitive. Alright. Alright, the reason why I actually agree with the cause for Mark Rashford is just because he's in form and the likes of a Wayne Rooney is out injured, the likes of a Daniel Sturridge well, he hasn't played regularly and is injury prone. Right? So you might as well roll the dice. Yeah, with but a there, player in form. Yeah, but now, there are other there are other players said, there are other players though who have played who have played a lot more football this season and who who potentially deserve that place. I mean I would not want to see another Theo Walcott two thousand six World Cup situation where barely played taken on the plane in place of someone who deserves it. Don't want to see no, that. Don't want thing. to see that politicking and good old boy networks happening again. Don't want to see it. The second half of what I was going to say was, as you pointed out, that there are other players who deserve to go, who should go. So you know, based on that, would I take him? I would say no. All right, and even if that means you're looking at the championship for a striker, I would say why not. I, I really don't understand this what is essentially a stigma uh, with the England selection committee whereas it's almost like well if you're not playing in the Premier League 
right? And you're not playing for one of the established teams that would equate to what is arguably now known as what top four, top six. Mm. If you're not playing for one of those, then essentially you don't get in, which is why you know um, I'm really happy with the call up for drink water. Really happy for it. I think he deserves it. You know, he's been absolutely fantastic. Give him a chance. And I don't mean, oh, one or two games and then as soon as somebody gets fit, he's kicked out. No, I mean, give him an extended run. All right? Same thing with Jamie Vardy, actually playing up top. Give him an extended run. You know, and then, of course, I'd say, well, why not look at the under-21 options as well? Are there not players in the under 21s that could be called up to fill some of the spaces? It's just an mm-hmm. idea. I'm just one of them ones. Right? Just, Where I, it's like I, 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 I don't think players. You, I don't right? think players should be should be fast tracked, and that's the de- that's as the as danger. As I said to you, I I don't think he should actually go based on that. Right? Like yes, he's come in. He's been absolutely sensational, rejuvenated the spirit around the club and everything else. It's essentially been the story of the second half of the season, right? But in terms of him also deciding to go to England, go to the England squad straight away and everything else, I would say no. And this is also part of the problem, as I said, with the national team in the sense of um, there hasn't been a, a, a depth in the pool of players that they're looking at. You know, they're always looking at a very, very small uh, select group. Whereas I think it should be broadened, not just, you know, as I say, to those top six teams in the Premier League, but across the Premier League and even down into the Championship and League One. Mm. Just because, all right, what you're really looking for is numbers. And you never know what someone will do until you give them a chance. No, of course. Especially when the guys in the front, or in the front front in, aren't necessarily performing so if those guys aren't performing your only other choice is to look at your other options Hmm. and let's be honest can we honestly say that the majority of the players in that first 11 or even you know in the squad in general over the last few years have they really performed no so it's time to give somebody else a chance